In this video, I talk about what is Linux and why we should learn Linux. So firstly, we are going to talk about what the Linux is and a lot of people don't know this. But when we talk about Linux, we are actually talking about the Linux kernel, that core component of any operating system. That component, which is the kernel, regulates communication between hardware and software. That kernel is Linux over there and everything else that's built around it like services as well as utilities such as graphical user interfaces that ultimately makes up a Linux distribution. Let's move on and talk about why should you learn about Linux. Actually, you have interacted with Linux in some way or another. So you will find Linux is used in many things like TVs, phones and networking equipment you know when you go shopping and you have to check out that point of sale system is most likely running some sort of linux plus tablets and gps devices in fact they run linux also a lot of machines that power the stock exchanges are linux based more than that, you have interacted with Linux in other ways like on the internet in the cloud. And a great way to explain the cloud is that it's just someone else's computer that you are making use of. Anyway, if you are doing shopping or looking at news websites or dealing with media storage software as a service, that means you have dealt with Linux in one way or another because the cloud is really made up of a lot of Linux machines. Other than that, people who use Linux cloud typically be developers. Developers need somewhere to run their code, so what they could do is that they could stick their code into a container, where the container is a place for you to run your code because it has the libraries and it has the application runtime to support your code. Other than that, engineers can make use of Linux to automate workloads. So you could have your Ansible playbook, for example, on your Windows machine. From there, Ansible Tower will pick up those playbooks and then it could automate workloads, taking care of a lot of manual tasks that he will execute in servers, network devices, and applications that could ultimately be automated and Linux powers that. So why Linux is so great? First of all, it's open source software. As you know so far in the previous slide, I explained what a Linux distribution is and how modular actually is. So you could add the components that you need. You could take out the components that you no longer need and that's really good thing about Linux. And it allows Linux to run anyway. I have actually got some source code. This is real source code. This is a source code for Ansible and it's a great example of automation software. You may not have the technical skills yet to understand what's going on that code. But the point is that I could access the source code and by me and other people being able to access the source code could help and make it more stable because if I have found bugs or security vulnerabilities in the source code then I could develop a fix or I could develop a patch or even I could develop an enhancement and then I could submit that to the rest of the open source community to review and contribute with me to do more enhancements. That means as far as open source software is concerned, that makes your software more stable and secure. And finally, when you are going to learn Linux, I do recommend to practice on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So how do you get Red Hat Enterprise Linux right now? There are a couple of ways that you can. First of all, you can go into Red Hat website and you can get an evaluation copy. And I would encourage you to get a Red Hat developer subscription. And the developer subscription not only comes with the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but there are a couple of other components, of course. 
but you could download a copy of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and you could have it subscribed and it's not going to be supported by Red Hat however you are going to get the updates and you could learn using one of the most powerful stable Linux distribution which is Red Hat Enterprise Linux another place where you could get Red Hat Enterprise Linux is in the cloud providers such as AWS there is an AMI and if you don't know what an AMI is it's an Amazon machine image so there is Red Hat Enterprise Linux Amazon machine image available in the AWS marketplace so you could create EC2 instance from that image and do practice during the course that's conclude our session see you next video in this video, I talk about how to interact with Linux using Bash Shell. Linux, just like any Unix system, is designed as a multi-user, multitasking operating system. This means that multiple users can run multiple tasks at the same time, independent of each other. Security is of course mandatory on such systems, since it would be unacceptable if one regular user could stop or otherwise affect processes of other users. In order for this separation to work properly, user authentication is needed. User authentication on a Linux system is done when you first start using the system. Before you can do anything, you need to identify yourself using your username and password. On a real multi-user system, the system administrator will assign you a username and initial password but if you are using Linux on your personal workstation you need to create a user account for yourself or login as root which is the account of the super user there are many ways of logging into a Linux system the first method is by using the console as we are doing right now I am going to login as root user then type in roots password in most Linux distributions the console emulates a number of virtual terminals called TTY these virtual terminals can be seen as separate directly attached consoles and can be used by different users there are hotkey combinations to switch from one VT or virtual terminal to another this hotkey combination is control alt and then f1 and that will take you to the first tty to go to the second tty control alt f2 and remember control alt f2 will take us to tty2 and what you can see right now is that we have a login prompt and this is a textual login prompt and I can login so let's login as root then type root password let's go to TTY3 we could see the same thing TTY4 TTY5 and TTY6 and finally TTY7 what's going on tty7 is that when i log in in tty1 which is the login screen for our graphical user interface then the system will automatically open a new gnome shell in tty7 for that user so let's go back to tty1 again and log in using another user We will log in as student. We will notice again that the system will automatically open a new genome shell in TTY 8 for that user. So if we press on this small arrow, we will see that we have logged in as student user. If we go back again to TTY7 using Control Alt F7 and click on this small arrow, we will see that we logged in using root user.
let's come back again to tty1 using control alt f1 and login using yasin user we will see that the system again will automatically open a new genome shell in tty9 for yasin user so if we click on this small arrow we will notice that we logged in using yasin user so to recap this point we would say that tty1 is reserved as login screen for our graphical user environment and from tty7 and above are reserved for running the genome shell for logged in users coming from tty1 and finally tty2 till tty6 are reserved to login into the system using textual mode i mean without graphical user interface the second method to login into linux is by using the network using programs such as telnet and ssh as we explained before that the shell is the interface between the user and the kernel to manage the operating system in many ways the shell is much like the dos command interpreter so how to use the shell simply in graphical user interface we use application called terminal which provides a visual representation of the shell for the user to enter commands so using that terminal you can type commands and receive responses back similar to a DOS prompt in windows to open the terminal go to the activities then terminal this is the interface of the bash which will be used during the course and if we boot the operating system without GUI or the graphical user interface we will be automatically jumped to the terminal interface like we have seen in TTY 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 although most of Linux distributions now include a graphical interface and many administration tools have been converted to graphical format you as an administrator will find that some tasks are best performed from the command prompt in addition while graphical components vary between linux distributions shell commands are most likely to be consistent between linux distributions so if you will learn shell commands in one distribution like centos or red hat for example you would be able to manage any linux distribution the default shell in most linux distribution is called bash and it stands for born again shell as we will learn during the course when we use linux command shell we will see the command prompt indicates that the system is ready to accept commands the command prompt here indicates that the logged in username is root and the server name is server1 and we have an at sign separating the two then we have the tilde character defines that we are currently located on the home directory of the logged in user and finally we have hash sign usually means that we logged in as a super user which is root if hash sign is replaced by dollar sign it means that we logged in as a regular user so let's open new tab and switch to a regular user using su dash mustafa here we can see that the hash sign has been replaced by the dollar sign it's important when you read any linux online documentation or any linux book sometimes you will see that the command precedes by dollar sign that indicates the command should be running by regular user and when the command precedes by hash that indicates that the command would be running by root now let's move on and explain linux command format before using commands or working at the command line we need to talk about the linux command syntax for people coming from Windows environment, Linux command syntax is a little bit different from the DOS syntax. In DOS world, you are used to type the command like copy and then file1, file2 and then put your switches at the end. 
it's the same concept in Linux, but some things are rearranged just a little bit. So in Linux, options or switches come before the files or the things that are going to be operated on. So in Linux, command has the following format. The command name, space option, or options, then space argument, or many arguments. The order and separation of the elements of the command is very important. To make it more clear, let's explain that using a simple example ls-l slash boot the command name must come first like ls spaces are used by the shell as a separator on the command line and should not be placed within the command name after that we have the option dash l the options should follow the command name separated by space and preceded by a dash or minus sign such as dash l option also, options are typically used to modify the operation or the behavior of the command. And we can use multiple options grouped immediately after a single dash, like dash LA, or separated by spaces and each preceded by a dash, or a minus sign like dash L dash A. Finally, we have the argument also called a command line argument which can be a file name or other data that's provided to a command in order for the command to use it as an input and the argument slash boot will follow the options again separated by space keep in mind that the order of the arguments will depend on the command after typing the command simply press enter to run it so that ls command will long listing the contents of slash boot including the hidden files. Let's run the same command again but this time without any option. It will display the content in another format. In the previous command, dash l option displays the content in long listing, giving more information about the content, such as the permission, the owner user, the owner group, the timestamp, and the object size. And dash a option displays the hidden files, which are started by dot character. But in the current command, we run without any options. It displays the content in abbreviation mode. So we could notice here how the options can be used to change the behavior of the command and we have another kind of option which is defined as a word like help in this case we should use double dash with it for example ls dash dash help will display the help of the command ls also we have tty command this command reveals information about the connected terminals. So TTY can tell us the number and the name of the TTY. We have two TTY types or two terminal types. The first type is sudo or fake terminals. And the second type is the real terminals. So what's the difference between both types? Sudo terminals are the terminals which are opened when using GNOME terminal or when we connect to the system remotely using network services such as SSH. As we can see here that we have slash dev slash pts slash one which is the second sudo terminal and if we run the same command on the first terminal tty we will see that this is the first sudo terminal. On the other hand, real terminals are the terminals which are opened when connected to the system at the physical console. So if we press Ctrl Alt F2 and run TTY, we will see that we have slash dev slash TTY2 indicating real terminals number 2. So why it's important to know this information? There is number of reasons included but not limited to 
to be able to determine where processes are running. When we call the running processes tree using ps-ef command, it will tell us each process is running on which terminal in order to be able to manage that process. We can see some processes are running in the background indexed by question mark. That means these processes are running and are not associated to any terminals. We can see PTS0 and PTS1 indicating that the bash shell is running on these sudo terminals. Also we can see the command ps-ef which is running on the real terminal number 2. So to recap our session, in general we can log in into Linux locally using the console or remotely using network services such as SSH or Telnet. We have multiple TTYs in Linux which can be used as a separate virtual terminal to manage Linux and we can switch between them using Control alt and FN where N is the number of the TTY we want to access. And the Linux command simply consists of three parts. The first part is the command name, the second part is the option, and the third part is the argument. And finally, we have two types of terminals. The first type is sudo terminals, which are used for GNOME terminal, or when we connect to the system remotely using network services such as SSH. And the second type is real terminals, which are opened when connected to the system at the physical console. And TTY command can be used to get information about the terminal, such as the terminal name and the number. That concludes our session. See you next video. In this video, I talk about how to getting help using Linux helping tools. In Linux, there is a general concept called don't memorize everything because there are many options you could use to get whatever you want to get your task done. One of the excited options you could use is system manuals. The most of commands and programs installed within the Linux environment will by default install manual pages. In general, Across all Linux and Unix systems, manual pages are accessed using man command. Let's say, for example, you need to know more information about the parameters of the ls command. Simply do the following, man ls. It's quite simple. Man space the program name will return information regarding that program. To navigate into the manual page, we use up and down arrows or page up and page down in the keyboard. To search for a particular pattern inside the manual page, we use forward slash. Then type the pattern we need, for example, list. Then press enter. By default, it will search for that word from up to down direction. To continue searching in the same direction, we press N small. And to search in the opposite direction, we press N capital. If we go to the top of the manual page, we will see that the most of the manual pages follow specific structure. Here we can see the name section, which defines the command name. Then we can see the synopsis section which defines the typical usage of the command. After that we can see the description section which defines more details about that command. Then we can see the list of options which can be used with that command. And also we can see the author section and reporting bugs where you could report any bugs. That's the basic structure of the main document. To exit from the manual page, we use Q. The most commands and programs installed in Linux will by default install manual pages within a specific directory structure. If we use the command man path, 
it will tell you all the directories where the manuals are installed so when we install any application it will install its manuals inside one of these directories by default the system manuals are installed on user share man so if we navigate to user share man using cd command and then list the content of this directory using ls command we will see that manuals have many sections man1 man2 till man9 so man sections typically correspond to a specific manual for a specific part of the operating system the most important man sections are man1 man5 and man8 because man1 contains the manual of normal user tools such as ls and cd as opposite to section 8 is more for administrative commands and then another important one is man5 which contains the configuration files manual you know you cannot remember everything about a configuration file so you can check section 5 of the manual page which tell you more about the configuration files and which directives are supported and what the possible values are for that particular directives if you want to know more about which man pages are available you could do a search by man dash k followed by specific pattern so i am going to do a search for password pattern and you can see over here that it comes up with a list of manual pages which include the password pattern and also you can see the section numbers over there so if we type man password it will open the section one for the manual page of the password command which contains the manual of normal user tools and to open section five which includes the configuration file manual just type man5 password so we can see over there that we are opening section 5 of the password manual page to clear the screen we can use clear command or we can use control l as a shortcut now let's move on and explain another command which can be used to get information about a specific command what is command will return a short description about a particular command so for example if we use what is ls we can see a short description of that command also we can use what is command with many arguments such as what is ls cal and cat that command will display short description about ls cal and cat commands one more thing we need to know about what is command is that what is command uses a database that's updated every night however we can force the operating system to create or update that database using update db command which should be done by the root user the third command which can be used to get information about a specific command is where is where is command will search for the binary the configuration files and the manual pages for a specific command for example where is password here we can see the binary location of the password command which is user bin password we can see also the configuration file of that command which is etc password and finally we can see the location of the manual page of that command in user share man directory finally we have info command this command provides more details about a particular command to get info pages about ls command simply type info ls Info pages support hyperlinks like HTTP web pages. Info page is divided into nodes which are preceding by asterisk. 
each node has information about specific topic. To navigate into the info page, we use up, down arrow or page up, page down buttons in the keyboard. We use tab button to go to the next link. Here we can see that the link is preceding with asterisk. To enter that link, we press enter. To go to up one level, we press U. And to go to the last node, we press L. We can use N to go to the next node. And we can use P to go to the previous node. To search for a specific pattern, we use S. Then type the pattern you want to search for, like list. To exit from the info page, we use Q. Now you have acquired the required skills you need to get whatever you want during your journey with Linux. To recap this session, in Linux we have many built-in tools that can be used to help us to get our job done, such as man, info, where is, and what is commands. And remember the general concept, don't memorize everything. That's conclude our session, see you next video. In this video, I talk about file types fundamental. One of the things that's important to understand during learning Linux and Unix is the concept of the file system or how Linux and Unix deals with the file systems and files. First thing we should understand that Linux or Unix is designed in general to treat with everything as a file including the hardware devices such as sound cards, hard disks, CPUs, serial ports, video cards, all of these things Linux will treat with them as a file. As the Linux runs, Linux opens, reads, writes, and closes the files it needs. Since Linux treats with everything like a file, there are standard types of files. So let's explain the different types of files in Linux. Firstly, the regular or normal file. This is generally normal file such as HTML, text, Word, executable files. To know the file type, simply use file command followed by the file path or file name such as Etsy password. Here we can see that Etsy password is ASCII text file. If we display the content of Etsy password file, we will see it's already text file. Second file type is the directory, which is a file type designed specially to hold or point to other file types. For people who are coming from Windows environment, directory in Linux is similar to the folder concept in Windows. For example, file slash home will display that slash home is a directory. We have also another file type which is the link file. We have two types, soft or symbolic link and hard link. For example, file slash bin will display that slash bin is symbolic link to user bin. Soft or symbolic links are similar to shortcuts concept in Windows. Soft or symbolic link is a file system entry that points to another file system entry, which in turn points to a valid piece of data. If the original entry in the file system is deleted, then the link will not be working. That means we will lose the data. And symbolic links can work across volumes and file systems. For people who are coming from Windows environment, in Linux we have the concept called file systems or volumes, which are similar to hard disk partitions in Windows. On the other hand, we have a hard link, is a duplicate entry in the file system that points to specific piece of data. If the original entry in the file system is deleted, the hard link maintains a valid pointer to the data. And the hard link should be created on the same file system of the original file. That means it cannot work across volumes and file systems. For example, we can get hard link 
information using ls dash l slash etsy here we can see the link account which defines the hard link accounts and for update db.conf we have only one hard link for upower directory we have two hard link for udev directory we have four hard links the hard link files have been created by default during the os installation but in fact as an administrator you will not need to create the hard links let's move on and explain another file type which is special files we have many types of special files such as a character file that accept this input one character at a time and character files often point to devices like sound cards serial ports video port or keyboard for example file slash dev slash tty1 is the character special file for the first virtual terminal when we access the system using the physical console we have another kind of special files called block file that accepts input in blocks and block files point to storage devices such as the hard disks for example file slash dev slash sda will display that dev sda is a special block device file we have also pipe file that file allows you to send information between applications so if we have one application needs to send information to another application it will use pipe file to send that information and finally we have socket file which is similar to pipe file but a socket file allows information to be exchanged over the network after this lesson you have acquired the skills to understand file types in linux that's to conclude our session see you next video